doing this. Sometimes I've talked to a lot of people. Sometimes they get visual. Sometimes they hear. Right? We all have some sort of way to connect to our inner being. And um, whichever it is, it's learning to listen to it and to trust it. So I'm sure you've had many experiences in life that you, you had that knowingness and did not trust it or, or follow it. I don't know if you can relate to that. But um, just um, learning, learning to um, follow it. So what I've noticed what happens with me and others is that when there's a departure from our spirit, life becomes difficult, more challenging, more struggles, more stress, possibly accidents, difficulty in making decisions, and there's, there's just on and on. We, we just seem to kind of meander and not find our way. So with Master Chen, he's giving us tools, um, handing us the tools that will help us to reconnect to reconnect and um, find our true purpose in, in our soul, in our spirit. What is our true purpose? Why are we here? Okay. So a little bit about um, my journey and, and, and the tools that are provided through these powerful Taoist ancient healing arts. And they, they are simply being in the moment. Just being in the moment, recognizing the moment, and immersing yourself in the moment. And, and so, you know, I know you're all practitioners, and how do we do that? Through meditation. But that's, that's a great way to do, to try to find your way to your spirit, is through that quiet meditative space. And it could be a walk in the woods. It could be a prayer. It could be just sitting silently in your backyard. Just anything that will quiet your senses and bring you back into your space. Okay. And that's, that's great. And that, that was sort of my evolution. But as I went through, I started practicing Tai Chi and Qigong. And I find those powerful tools to further enhance the spirit. They feed the spirit. The Qi nourishes and feeds the spirit. And so through the energy work of the Tai Chi and the Qigong, we're, we're able to strengthen our body, increase our physical body, our energy, our Qi, and, and um, um, be able to communicate better and listen to, to those whispers of the spirit. And, and so the whole journey with Taoism, um, kind of summarizing, is how much of that practice do we incorporate in our daily lives? Okay, everybody is familiar, I know I can speak for myself, about the meditation and the energy exercises, mindfulness, okay, and then the other healing arts. There's many healing arts associated with Taoism, uh, including in self-healing through the uh, exercises and also more externally through um, acupuncture, herbal diet, and uh, massages, reflexology, and and so how do we incorporate all that into our life and not forget? So it's the remembering for me, just remembering and acknowledging um, that there are those tools out there and not forgetting, not forgetting and incorporating them. So uh, the Mindfulness, uh, the intuitive mind, nurtures the spirit, and that's really the essence of our journey, is nurturing our spirit, nurturing, nurturing our soul so that we can, we can make the decision spontaneously, effortlessly, and move on. on. So finding that time um, to cultivate the mind and body, and um, so how do we do that? Do we, how do we, do we create that space? You know, each of us creates our own space and has our own cultivation practices to nurture and enhance spirit. And, and so we do provide the classes here on Sundays, the Tai Chi classes, after the lecture. And that helps to move energy, rebuild energy, rebuild the body, and, um, uh, and find that quiet space. 
So it's about that creating a sacred commitment between yourself and your spirit. And I um, just wanted to touch on that a little bit and, and say how important that is. And sometimes we lose track of that in their daily life. And, and just returning, returning to that, returning is the motion. Returning is the motion of the Tao. So returning to our spirit, living from spirit, and um, following, following our heart. So um, it's kind of the whispers of um, the spirit. And um, I know time and time again, I've seen people not listening and getting into accidents over and over again, they say, oh, I always have bad luck. Why does bad luck follow me? Um, are you listening to your spirit? I know when I don't, there's always some circumstance, negative circumstance that um, kind of wakes me up. I had a, a friend years ago, she had cancer at 17, and she said, she said it was just a wake-up call. I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. And then apparently she wasn't listening again in her 40s. Then that's what she said. But each time, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to heal thyself and to get back on the track, on the path, which is a very narrow path. It's a narrow path and it's very meandering and staying on the path is what Master Chen talks about. So he calls it the master within the master within, and how do we cultivate the master within. So uh, his book goes through a whole process, and um, just the uh, mindfulness. So there is a physical component, which meditation and Tai Chi help. But what happens through life generally is that our emotions kind of block our progress our emotions, desires, or the mindset, what, what, you know, the mindset that we start with from childhood and on, that mindset kind of limits us. So the philosophy is powerful in helping to, to use the concepts, the three treasures of the Tao, three treasures of the Tao are conscience, which is our spirit, of, knowing the rightness and wrongness in life, right? And our spirit, uh, actually I looked up what conscience is on dictionary this morning. It says, it's the inner feeling or voice that, that guides us, that it's, uh, it's the sense that we have for right or wrong. It's our spirit, again, coming back to our gut feeling, our intuition, and that's what conscience is, being in the moment and working and trans transforming through, uh, through spirit and um, conscious then mercy and forgiveness are the three treasures of the Tao and mercy and forgiveness and forgiveness is, is a big big one Master Chen always says forgive yourself first before you can forgive others right have mercy and love for yourself before you can extend that out to others so that's one of one of the most important um, forms of connecting to spirit is to do that inner work yourself for the forgiveness, the mercy, and then to be able to be conscious through spirit. Okay? So mind, mind and body work together. Okay? We have to strengthen the mind and the body through, through the practices. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a meandering, balancing, road, um, balancing our philosophy and our outlook, um, reducing and eliminating our emotions and desires every day, going lower and lower and lower, becoming more and more humble, and at the same time working on our energetic body and strengthening and feeding the spirit, nourishing the spirit. Um, so on this topic, I think that's about all, is just to remind everyone and to reconnect to your, um, to that sacred, to find that sacred commitment between yourself and your spirit. Um, and any questions?
comments? Would anybody like to comment? It's very similar to another religion, yes. <laughs> such as Christianity. I mean, they all say the same you know, thing. Yeah. Same thing. Right. And yeah, every religion basically is honoring yourself, your you know, love for yourself and others, um, and um, uh, it's just the reminders. That's why we meet here on Sundays. That's why I've studied with Master Chen for so many years, and every time I listen to him. Even if it's on the same topic, it always resonates differently uh, as I'm in a different place every time I hear it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a reminder that we, I find that it's very important. Uh, the group getting together to co collectively increase the energy and we, we just, just support each other in different ways and in many ways. The support that we provide through community through the community. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's about balancing the yin and the yang, the black and the white, the plus and the minus, how do we balance it? And Tai Chi itself means the old grand ultimate, which is finding a place in our lives that's the most harmonious, absolutely balanced, and it's like, you know, I like the pendulum concept. You know, our emotions sometimes swing from one side to the other side, from happy to sad, right? And it's learning to slowly, over time, to bring that pendulum pretty center. So no matter what happens, you're not affected to the extreme, right? And then that's where the healing takes place, and that's where, that's where you're in spirit, pretty much. Okay? So finding that balance in our lives and finding the tools, using all the tools that are available, and um, just just harmonizing, harmonizing, so that as we harmonize, our spirit grows. Our spirit grows, and we're always faced with challenges. Every single day, we are faced with challenges, and and the stronger you get, you might have more challenges too. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Transformational retreat in the Caribbean jungle. Oh. And part of what we really learned there was keeping a neutrality. This teacher used some of the Tao Tibetan lineage along with shamanism, mm -hmm. and kind of combined those. And really, um, my spinal cord ate, or my immune system ate my spinal cord a few years ago, and it grew back miraculously. And so, in facing that disease, it's really about finding the neutrality mm -hmm. in everything and not like when you're in that blissful state, you're like, oh yes, let's cling to this. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, in my experience at least, that to release yourself from really the senses and those old conditions mm -hmm. and really just sit mm -hmm. center with both and right. be able to, okay, if I think this is pain, maybe it's not too much pain, it's just a vibration. So I think Great. Just sit, just sit really. To sit, yeah, with it and just yeah. be with it until. Yeah. Well, that's a good point because a lot of people do start a meditation practice, and meditation does bring out a lot of old, unresolved emotions and circumstances, and and there is it could create that pain in the body, and so to go through it, and that's that's what you did, and you were able to self heal yourself. It's self healing. Through it's very transformative. We all have the medicine to heal ourselves. It's internal. We have to give it the space. We have to give it the space, the quiet space, and um, the quiet space through the exercises can heal us, can transform us, return us, slow down the aging process, return us back to a childlike state. So um, it's it's very possible. And it's just making that commitment, it's a commitment, and following it, following it every day religiously. And um, and the reason why I'm talking about this because I need to be reminded. Right? We 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 teach what we need to hear <coughs> best sometimes. And and it's it's making the commitment every day, picking a time a day, and doing a a, a, per, a practice for yourself, your time, your time out for yourself to nourish yourself and your spirit. And so. Uh, life gets in the way sometimes, and we have, you know, 
I make my excuses. <laughs> and uh, I have to put out breakfast, so there's an excuse, right? <laughs> so there's uh, that's that's um, it's just finding that balance throughout life, through through, um, through every circumstance. Yeah, finding the neutrality. Do you want to say something? Question. Um, yes. In the three treasures that you described as conscience, mercy, and forgiveness, I was thinking of a personality test that Myers Briggs, and one question in there was, Do you favor justice or mercy? And, and I chose justice because I think of nature as not necessarily <clears throat> merciful, but more like justice is where things are decided. But, it's not in here. I think maybe conscience is like justice, but it's more of an inner experience. And I'm just curious if where justice fits in, if in the Tao there's kind of a reluctance to go there. I mean, I doubt if that's true, but I'm just curious if, if they eliminate justice from that formula for a particular reason. Well, the Tao follows what is nature. And when you say justice, you mean in nature? Yeah, I mean, I mean kind of righteousness or a sense of there is one way, and if you deviate from that, you, you become unjust. I mean, there is justice in a sense of ultimate reality, I guess. Well, listening to your spirit will take you to the most right, righteous avenue. So when you're in your intellect and you're rationalizing, and that may not, that may not be the the highest truth, and your your spirit knows the highest truth, and it's it's when when you're so connected that then there is no need for law. So right, because you'll always follow what's correct in your heart. You'll always do what is correct. You won't, you know, basically justice. You won't hurt anyone. You won't physically, or you won't hurt them verbally. You, you just will. Yes. I just to say, isn't it kind of like? I mean, to me, it's like I feel like the energy I put out is the energy that flows back to mm -hmm. me. So that's the justice that you right. know, maybe that person hurts somebody, but then. I don't have to hurt them back, but later on, somebody may, that energy will come back from somebody else towards them, and they will experience mm -hmm. the justice then. It, it is true. What you put out comes back very quickly, and I'm finding, I don't know, the times, it's just, it, it, there's, there's that mirror effect constantly, constantly, so if you're judging, people will judge you, okay, right? So yeah, I hear that from Master Chen a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that that's totally true. It's totally true because you're constantly the universe is giving you what you need to resolve to work. So each time a situation like this happens, it's an opportunity for you to grow and transcend from it and not not get kind of buried in it. And and uh, so um, it. Every, every situation is an opportunity when you look at it that way. It's an opportunity for your own transformation, your own self-growth, your own progress, your own transcendence. And, and so these are just, just, like you said, it's, it's the mirror, the mirror effect. The mirror effect, yes. Just just kind of denotes, so like with sacred geometry, for instance, there's the one, there's the whole. And then there's these two points of duality. And to me, justice kind of denotes that duality because it, it puts into good or bad. Mm -hmm. And instead of that neutrality of the oneness, mm -hmm. it seems like the one step away from that oneness because now all of a sudden you have a good or you have a bad, you have a right or you have a wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't have the middle. So that's just how it mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and it seems like justice, like you were saying, is the rationale. And so I kind of view like the intuition being like common sense, and then your justice mm -hmm. being your rationale. Right, right. That's that's what that's what I think. They are justice, and that's why we have laws because because we need to contain 
certain <laughs> laws in, in society. If we were all w working from consciousness, then we don't need laws. We really don't, because you will be caring for others the same way you care for yourself. Right? You won't cut somebody off in traffic. Right? You'll, you'll follow the path. And this is a very interesting story. I went to China when, several times, and on one of the trips, I, I flew into a small village, Xianfang, and we had to travel about two hours to the mountains. And this small city for China is a large city right here. <laughs> and so we're going through what was quote unquote the highway, and there were three lanes and three lanes, and going in each direction. And there were bicycles with a whole family on them, little motorcycles with several family members and people on them, small cars, and then trucks, buses, and pedestrian, like everything. Everything, no traffic lights, no lines. <laughs> and I watched, I sat there totally mesmerized. They would, if somebody was going slow, they would go around them. And this went on, I watched this for a long time, and then nobody was honking, nobody was upset, and everybody was just flowing. Mm -hmm. And it was like the Tao of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just mesmerizing coming from New York City. And, um, and <laughs> right, that's where I'm from. And so it was, it was this, this, it was a lesson. I'm like, this is the Tao. This is totally the Tao. And, and it was just, I don't know what to say. I just sat there speechless and I said, this is the Tao. And they embody that in their culture. And they just are going, meandering like water, flowing around the rocks, the other cars. And it's, so you didn't need traffic lights and police to control the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is, there is. I've seen that in the culture. Um, I find every time I go, I find um, in the villages a lot of contentment within the people. They're just content with very little. They seem to be very happy. Um, they seem to, like I said, flow. They're flowing, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of police and, 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 and uh, a lot of well coming from this country doesn't appear, appear that way but people are just you know flowing while we are here struggling that's that's how I see the different societies our philosophies are different I see a lot of struggle and um, competition whereas there it's just okay just we'll flow wherever that takes us that's how it feels yeah yeah, so, yes? I'm not sure I can verbalize this as I, uh, as I would like to, but where does, okay, I'm, I'm, I, let's take a couple of current national issues of, of minimum wage, um, war for that matter, um, civil rights, and we, this last week is sort of loaded with those three issues. So if I'm peaceful and content in meditating. I, I know we say take care of ourselves first, mm -hmm. but then don't we, aren't we compelled to go out more or less? I mean, I'm, I'm not marching for wages and stuff, but people are. And is that not appropriate that we have this grouping to say for the betterment of all we have some we have some certain goals to reach. We, we have our our openness to um, rights for all. And the lowest employed have the right to a livable wage. I mean, I, 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 you know, can we use these energies then to go out and to be whatever protesting, mm -hmm. marching? working yeah. for so, these issues. So, so I'm not yeah. sure I'm saying this you right, know, right. Yeah, I, I won't go into politics and I won't, I won't I touch that, it. but I, I, I mean, the, the most important thing is to work on yourself. <laughs> and there's a ripple effect, because as you change, you know, we're genetically connected to our family, right? There's a lineage. 
so your your um, whether present or not, mother and daughter on either end, your your husband and and slowly it extends out. So there's transformation as you change. There is transformation around you, okay? And it's a ripple effect. And if they keep transforming, and then it ripples out, and that's why you know they talk about doing meditations as groups, and there's there's this energy that flows out. And uh, so we need to just keep working within ourselves and, and, and help our families and our communities and then that changes and then, you know, just, it, if there's enough of us, it will change the whole world, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, Laura. Christina, as I say, that's what, I mean, there's that old saying, and I don't know who said it, but they said, if you want to change the world, change yourself, because if everybody changes their self, think about Hitler, if Hitler would have been able to change himself, then there never would have, so, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, the foundation of what you're saying is like yeah. you change yourself yeah. and then everybody else changes. Right. And, but the thing is that different philosophies and different cultures and different religions might say, well, go, you know, humanitarian efforts instead of, hey, let's take care of <coughs> home first and then and then extend that out to, you know, yeah, people problems. have the role to play. Like when you were saying, I think, if you are more an internal person and you feel you can connect more through prayer or wishing positive things, then I would do that. There are other people whose natures are more external and who are perhaps more appropriate to bring these things to a political level, another energy level where that could be worked out. But I would say, recommend to you, use prayer or inner work, like um, Christine said, to send out the energy, to raise the energy of consciousness because that's what we need to do. We need to be all working in our own way. We're all individuals, but we all have a way of contributing to the whole. So follow the way which is most natural to you. It seems as if also um, one of the big lessons that I learned in Peru, like the teachings that he had, was we use some sacred ceremony and sometimes you're in this like kind of a basic of kind of suffering. And to as you do that work, to not do it for yourself, but to really put out the intent that you're doing it for the whole. Mm -hmm. So it gets you out of that I, ego, it's about me, stay, and then so when you're feeling that peaceful state, kind of like you said, what you give out, you, you get back. So when you're feeling that peaceful state, that's when you really become a channel for that. And so, and I also agree with you that some people are made to be out there more, and that might be their purpose. So that's where connecting with your spirit, the great yeah. paradox. Yeah. Of, yeah. Um, it, it, this is this whole universe. It's our whole journey. Our yeah. whole journey yeah. is reconnecting to our, our uh, higher self yeah. and, uh, and basically operating from that place, that space. And then life becomes easy. Decisions are easy. Um, there is no struggle, no challenges, there is no stress, because it's the way you view everything now, okay? You're detached, it's that detachment that it provides you, and that you're able to look at it from a different view, um, from a more cosmic view from broader. Did you want to add something? Yeah, I didn't want to discredit taking action, because I feel like, just the form what she said, we do that in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think you just asked me to pose the question that you just did, that was your way of taking action and raising this, this discussion that we're having. So if you're going to do it in that way, then that's what you should be doing. You know, and if you feel compelled to be stating those things, you're living in the now, and you're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and, and having us think and talk about those things. Whereas, yeah, and other times maybe thinking about it on your own and figuring out ways, you know, would be right. And I've heard all you wrong the same way. I've listened to the radio. Yes, I have, and, I'm, and I even put on my calendar a few days that I wasn't able to go to those marches and they're meeting at a restaurant that I liked and I just I just don't have the, the availability to do that. But I knew other people would and like now I have a sort of odd open forum where we can talk about this and how interesting even though I couldn't do it in my own way. Yeah. 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 So that's that's about it. Uh, just um, hopefully you will take something home from uh, this morning and kind of write yourself a little uh, commitment and uh, make a pact with spirit and and uh, and some people call it devotional time whatever you want to call it you know the 
Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. So we're just speaking words, you know, you have to experience it yourself. And everybody has their own path and, and just following, following your inner guidance and finding, finding your true path, the true path for your soul, the true path for your uh, spirit. And, as, and I know as, um, as my energy rises and goes down sometimes, because there's the ebb and flow in life, I find my spiritual paths change very quickly. So the stronger physically, energetically, I find myself more connected. And then when I get tired and deplete myself, I don't find that connection. So it's happened over the last two weeks. We've been really busy, super busy this summer, which is a blessing, uh, which means less time for myself, at least. That's the choices I've made. <laughs> it's a choice, right? <laughs> uh, and, and so I've, I've noticed how my thoughts, my thought patterns change, my physical changes. I've, I've noticed all that. So, so hopefully now September 1st, I am back on track. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you all. Blessings to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.